I'm Silu, and today we're making a gluten-free and a grain-free pizza that is higher in fiber, lower in carbs, and most importantly, tastes delicious. Most gluten-free pizzas out there are actually nowadays pretty good, but a lot of them contain sorghum or rice flours, both grains, which can really spike your blood sugar and leave you crashing afterwards. So today we're using a combination of flours made from tubers and legumes, both of which are lower on the glycemic index. Specifically, we're using lupin flour and tigernut flour to give our pizza the taste, texture, and appearance of pizza as we know it. So not only does it look good and taste good, but it's also better for your blood sugar. We're going to start by blooming one teaspoon of dry active yeast with half teaspoon of coconut sugar or inulin, if you have it, and add one cup of water that's heated to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Give it a whisk and set aside for 15 minutes. The first flower we have is tiger nut flower. Tiger nuts are tiny tubers, so you want to make sure you sift this three times. Break down the lumps with your hands, and you'll see at the end we've sifted out the tiny bits of tuber shell. Tiger nuts are high in resistant starch, which means they don't get absorbed by your colon, and it's really one of my favorite gluten-free flours of choice. Next, we have a quarter cup of potato starch, which will sift as well. Then add the lupin flour, which is a legume and has one net carb per quarter cup of flour. Add a quarter cup of cassava flour, one teaspoon of xanthan gum, half teaspoon baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt and stir it together. You could store this flour mixture in a container so the next time you want to make pizza, just pull out this, this container. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that the yeast is now nice and frothy. Add one teaspoon of psyllium husk, whisk, and then add the flour mixture and use your spatula to help the dough come together. I want to just quickly mention that lupin has a known cross-reactivity with peanuts for those out there with a peanut allergy. We're going to knead the dough in a mixer for five minutes and then cover it with a tea towel and let it sit for 60 minutes. While we're waiting for the dough to rise, I want to show you an easy pizza sauce Pulse down a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes to whatever chunkiness you desire. Add a little bit of olive oil to a hot saute pan and add the tomatoes and two tablespoons of tomato paste. And add half a teaspoon of dried parsley, quarter teaspoon of dried basil, quarter teaspoon of dried oregano, and salt. You could also add some garlic if you like. Let this cook down for five minutes and that is it. Our dough is ready. It's not going to double, but it will give a small rise and it's really about the yeasty flavor. I have a piece of parchment here and I'm going to just trace the pizza pan like this so I know what size to roll my dough out. Put the parchment on a damp towel so it doesn't move around too much, then put the dough on the parchment and rub a little olive oil on top. Gently start shaping the dough in a circle and then use a rolling pin to finish rolling it out into a circle. The crust should be about a quarter inch thick. You can fix the edges with your fingers to make them a little neater. Then par-bake the crust for 10 minutes. You could at this point let the crust cool and freeze it for later. We're going to slide the crust directly onto the pizza pan so the bottom can get crispy. Then spread your sauce on top and your toppings of choice. I was craving bell pepper and onions so we're going with that. Pop the pizza back in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes and it's ready to eat. You'll notice the pizza's half gone because my kids rushed in to eat it before I could finish shooting. Thank you so much for watching. If you know someone who's craving pizza who's recently gone gluten-free or grain-free, don't forget to send them this video.